What's up, guys? Tim Hostel with Drag Boss Garage. Yeah, there's a look of determination from little Elena. Well, here's an update of where I'm at. Check this out. So you can see the starter mounting bolts right here and right here. And what I had to do to get this to work out perfect was put the flex plate back to where it was without a spacer. I put a spacer plate here, just like a spreader, like everyone had talked about. Because otherwise, this flywheel was already back 90 thousandths plus it's missing the shim that goes here. So I took and made a shim. Like this. You can see how I put it around the starter. That's the 65 thousandths I needed to have it back to where it belonged. Now the starter's shimmed the way it was from the factory, at least the way it was closer than I had it before, and now only missing a distance of 25 thousandths. But we're gonna bolt it up and we'll see how it works. Now you saw the block plate. Fords have a block plate. GM doesn't have it. Mopar doesn't have it that I know of but it's 65 thousandths. And that little bit has made a big difference in the starter, at least the way I want to see it. So when I had the mid plate put on, that's 90 thousandths. So in theory, the difference between 65 and 90 would be 25 thousandths. However, in this case, when I did that, there was no shim here for the starter. So when I put that on with that mid plate, this ring gear, the pinion would go way past the ring gear which you can see a picture of it. And it's not supposed to go back that far. And it seemed to really work the starter a little bit. So I said, okay, so I got that spacer plate, which people said I needed a spreader ring anyways. So my chassis guy said, well, put the spacer plate in front of the ring gear, which I did. So when you do that, what happens is initially with the 90,000 mid plate, it's moving the bell housing and starter that way. It's moving this, the teeth of that pinion deeper into the gear. So when I put the spacer on, what it did was move the ring gear out that way, 90,000, so it equals that. But I still didn't have the plate here. So when you engage a starter, it was working, but it wasn't going enough teeth to me. They say you want, I want to say half to two thirds, and it might have been a third, maybe a little bit more, but not enough. So I had talked to JP again, actually I had called JW who makes the wheel in regards to whether you need a spreader ring they said that you should have one they can't tell you not to but in theory that flywheel is thick enough you don't need one the flex plate I mean I talked to performance automatic who made this they really didn't have much to say he didn't comment about the block plate he said oh it should be fine but we didn't take in consideration the thickness of this 65 thousandths so we were thinking it'd be only 25 thousandths or 30 or something. So I also talked to Moroso, who made the mid plate. He said to use both the block plate and the mid plate together. Well, that won't work in my case because the transmission cross members made custom for this setup. I'd have to modify that and I didn't want to. So what I did is I took the stock block plate, which I showed you a picture of, and cut it out to make a shim which is 65 thousandths. Then I put the flywheel back in the original position it's always been. Got rid of the spacer here and put it on the back. Now it's gonna be the retainer ring, spacer ring, whatever. It spreads the load, can't hurt, that's for sure. Now it brought the ring gear back because before without this shim, it was starter pinion was going too deep like I said. Now with this shim here, and the flex plate in the original position, it's golden. Without the shim, that was coming way past that area. The starter pinion was past the ring gear. With a spacer in front of the fly, uh, flex plate, it wasn't engaging far enough. Enough it worked, you saw it turn over. And it ran, but I just didn't like the way it was, so 
put it back the way it should be. It's close enough for government work. Now what I'm trying to do is see if I can get this transmission in without undoing the headers. So had to work on that case a little bit, but I have a dummy case and then the regular SFI bars I'm gonna use. And I know if I put it up sideways like this, Fit. Easier said than done. But I think that I can put it on the jack sideways like that, raise it up, and then manhandle it into position. The hard part would be with that converter in there. But. It'll slide right down between. manhandling. Jesus. Yep. Be nice. Hopefully I can get a tranny jack with a nice little adapter so I can put it on sideways. Be nice to rotate it up without trying to manhandle it, but I don't know. Let me see what they have in line. No, there's no, the horn's not hooked up. How'd you know how to do the window net? Because there's a thing up here. Ah, good deal. <laughs>